Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'm painting the seascape in watercolour. It's a demonstration painted in an intuitive and loose style. I'm working from this photograph of mine that I took um, a while ago. It's of St Non's Bay in Pembrokeshire. It's a beautiful spot and there's a lovely chapel there. If you're interested in knowing more about it, I'll put you a link in the description box below the video. So I'm going to be doing this painting demonstration in a intuitive, loose style. And um, I was trying to think how you might define intuitive. It's quite difficult. Um, I googled it, as you do, but I didn't really come up with any definitive answers. The nearest I came to something that I can understand and put into words is that um, an intuitive painting process is where you forget about the final product, you forget about the final image and allow each step of the process to inform what comes next. I would say this painting is partially intuitive. Um, so although I didn't start out with a definite preconception about what the final image was going to be, I did do some planning because I wanted the picture to actually represent the scene that I was looking at and I wanted to pick out the elements that interested me. If like me you like loose watercolours, loose paintings, loose mixed media paintings, and you're trying to um, work like that, as I am doing, I'm trying to all the time move my work forward and work in a way that I feel is more enjoyable, then I hope that um, you find this video interesting. I hope you enjoy watching it and then maybe picking out some ideas and some techniques that you can incorporate in your own paintings. I did do quite a bit of editing on this video because it was quite long and so I've shortened it and um, most of it I've included some um, quiet music. It's only partially narrated but towards the end of the video I'll talk about the process and give you a bit more detail about my thinking while I was doing it. I do like to start my drawing sometimes using, using a pencil but using a, a charcoal pencil and I use the charcoal pencil as you can see, just to give me some idea of where some of the main points of interest in this photograph were. I'd like to think I was doing the drawing in a, an intuitive sort of way. I wasn't being, certainly wasn't looking at the photograph and copying all the details. I just wanted to indicate the main position of some of the elements uh, that were in the photograph bearing in mind that uh, I was going to incorporate these marks that I was making into the final painting. I feel I can use the charcoal really freely, um, which is what I wanted to do on this painting, uh, but also I wanted to incorporate the pencil marks into the final image. So the final painting is basically um, charcoal and watercolour. So you'll see the charcoal pencil I've used in various places and I've incorporated it into the whole image. Apart from this um, beginning planning work, um, I think the painting on the whole was very intuitive. I certainly had no preconceived image about what it was going to look like in the end. I just knew that I did want to retain this seascape. I wanted to have the cliffs. And as always, I was particularly interested in foreground flowers and foliage, so I knew they would come into it. I didn't want to represent it entirely, and I didn't put the path going down. I knew I wasn't going to do that. I just wanted to paint some of the elements and not be worried about where I was placing them necessarily. I started the painting by doing the sky and moving towards the sea, um, just letting the watercolour do its own thing really, some wet into wet washes. And you'll see I actually dropped in a bit of gouache. I thought I'd um, not left enough white paper. I felt I just needed a bit more white in there. Not sure. It just mixed with the watercolour. I'm not sure it did an awful lot of good, but it mixed with the watercolour, gave some quite nice effects. And I just, as I say, I just let the colours run together, do their own thing.
the warmth on the cliff to the right caught my eye and I rather like those so I, I put some of this warmth um, in various places on the picture and then moved on to some of the oranges that I liked, again these nice warm colours of the gorse. As you can see here at this stage I'm using the charcoal pencil. I do like to use the charcoal pencil as I go along so I'm incorporating the charcoal work with the watercolour. I'd put some warm greys on the cliffs here and lighter on the distant cliff. I'm sorry I didn't film that little bit but um, it just went on as a flat wash and I dotted the um, brush around at the, at the base. The, uh, the sea was dry so if I dotted the brush around a little bit then you can get some of those suggestions of the, uh, of the wave shapes in there. It's a place where I did want some hard edges. And then I was looking on the top of the cliff there at the colours and there was certainly quite a bit of green going on so I was putting some green in at this stage and doing some soft wet into wet washes and again incorporating the pencil marks as I went along. All the time I'm painting I'm keeping an eye on my reference and um, when I'm painting these cliffs I'm trying to get some sort of indication of form in them without copying the form that's actually on the photograph. It's that, um, it's that bit in the definition I was talking about of intuitive painting where it's um, a process where you allow each step of it to inform what comes next. So you know it's very difficult to describe and, and um, in words that but you're putting strokes down seeing what they look like and then deciding how you're going to move forwards without necessarily looking and copying a reference. I suppose it's very much like abstract painting isn't it when you're not exactly sure where you're going but it's an intuitive process. I suggested a few rocks in the sea um, with the um, dotting around sort of method that I use and then I moved on to doing some work on the on the gorse in the foreground.
At this stage I moved on to the foreground. You can see the photograph up there top left. Um, I wanted to bring the foreground forward because um, I was doing a landscape here and I did want to have some depth in the um, in the painting so I'm using some warm colours, broad strokes and I incorporated some of the, although I didn't paint the path, I incorporated some of that warmth that was in the path in the foreground which again would help to bring things forward. The red I used, in case you're interested in that, was a light red which is a good landscape colour. For this next stage you'll see that I did some more work on the gorse bushes, I finished those off and incorporated some of the green that I was using into the foreground. I decided to add a bit more light red at this stage um, and then to darken the rocks a little bit to bring them forward. So throughout this painting I was trying to work in a loose, more intuitive way, working with watercolour, but at the end of the day I was painting a seascape and I wanted the composition to work, so at this stage I put a mount around it and had a good look at it to decide where to go next. I felt the painting really started to come together when once I put the branches on the, the gorse bush. I was quite surprised really, to be quite honest, I didn't think I'd go anywhere with this painting, I didn't think it was going to work at all, which wasn't going to bother me, it was an intuitive experimental painting, I wasn't worrying about it. I just happened to have the camera up, I was filming it, um, but I wasn't particularly expecting it to necessarily um, end up on the YouTube channel. But as I said, once I started to put these, um, these branches on, I felt it did come together, it started being more cohesive. So I was quite pleased with that.
a few seagulls and a little bit more pencil work in the foreground and I called it finished. I'd be very interested to know um, what you think about the painting process here so do leave some uh, feedback in the comments and as always please post some of your own paintings in our Facebook group. It's really nice to see how people interpret some of the photographs I'm using and their own photographs as well. So do try and post some work on there. If you like my channel and its content and haven't subscribed already then do subscribe and you won't miss anything in the future. I've got some more landscapes and some more seascapes coming up and I'm looking forward to painting them. Bye for now.